Hey guys, today we'll be making a video on flow curves. In my last two videos, I talked about, uh, in my last two videos, I talked about vectors as partial derivatives, and I talked about the Einstein field equations. And the Einstein field equations, that video was pretty much a, t a teaser of what we were going, of what we were trying to learn or of, of what we're building up to learn pretty much and then my my most recent video my vectors as derivatives video this is a continuation of that video in my last video i talked about how vectors can be reinterpreted as derivatives normal ve normal vectors could be thought of as uh as the derivative of a position of a position vector with respect to lambda, and basis vectors can be thought rethought of as the partial derivative of a r vector with respect to the direction that basis vector is actually traveling in. So in this video, we're going to take that video on another level and start doing some differential and start solving some differential equations. It's going to be really fun, and let's, let's get into it. So, here I have graphed uh, a vector field. V equals Y, E, X plus 2, E, Y. Just for a clarification, the E, X basis vector is just the unit basis vector in the X direction, and then the E, Y vector is a unit basis vector in the y direction they both have length of one and e x equals the partial equals partial r over partial x and e y equals partial r over partial y respectively so i'm going to refer to partial r over, over partial x as just e x just to make it easier for me to pronounce so yeah that's our background. We have a vector field. As I've graphed here, it's going to look, look some, something like this. At every point in this field, there will be a vector. We can do many things with this field. We can find the rates of change of this field. But in this video, that will not be the scope of this video. We're not going to care. We're not going to do that until a later video. In this video, we want, we want to find the parameters for x and y. By just knowing what the vector field is. Because we usually get the parameters for x and y. Like we might say that x equals lambda squared and y equals 2 lambda to the 4th plus 3. And from that, we will find what our vector field looks like. But this time, we are starting with, we are starting with our vector field. We want to find what our parameters of x and y would be. We want to find what our curves would be in this scenario. So how would we do, start go, go about doing that? Well, we can go back to the multiple chain rule that I mentioned in the last video. You know, that v equals... Dx over d lambda, ex plus dy over d lambda, ey. That's just expanding. It's in the multi multivariable chain rule. So if v equals y ex plus x, e, y, well then, and these are the corresponding parts. These parts are the corresponding parts. Then that must mean that dx over d lambda equals y. And dy over d lambda equals x. It means dx over d lambda equals y. And dy over d lambda equals x. 
And these are differential equ equations that we need to solve. And we can solve both of these by just using integration. Nothing fancy here. Let's first start off of solving this, of solving the rightmost equation. dx over d over d lambda equals y. That means that y equals dx over d lambda. We can integrate both sides and we get y lambda equals x. That is what we get. So we can't really do anything here. We don't get anything valuable over here. We just get x equals y lambda, but we need to know what y is, but we don't know what y is. But don't fear, we have this equation over here. We have dy over d lambda equals x. So let's just drop this one and start to, and start to solve this equation right here. Wait a second. Oops, I just made a big mistake. I made a really big mistake. Okay, so dy, here is our equation. Is v equals y e x plus 2 e y. It's 2 e y, not x e y. It's 2 e y. Okay. That should be a 2. It's not a big mistake. It's, it's a minor mistake. But, nonetheless, this is what, this is what we get. Yeah, y lambda equals x, but we don't know what y is. So to define what y is, we have to solve this, equa this equation right here. y lambda equals 2. It's 2, okay. So dy over d lambda equals 2. How do we solve this? Well, we can just integrate both sides, and we get y equals 2 lambda plus a constant k. We should have added our constant over here as well. And we had to add a constant c over here. So we get y equals 2 lambda plus a constant k. Let's call it this k y. Let's call this c cx for convenience reasons. So we have our, the, the formula for y, y equals 2 lambda plus ky, and we have x equals cx plus lambda y. We can plug in this expression for the y over here, and we get 2 lambda plus ky times lambda plus cx equals x. And then we have y equals 2 lambda plus ky. So let's distribute this out real quick. That's going to give us uh, 2 lambda squared plus ky lambda plus cx equals x. And that's going to give us, and then we have y equals 2 lambda plus ky and we're done we have the parameters for x and y and these are what will give us curves this isn't one specific curve this, this will just give us a, a general curve on this it'll give us a curve that will follow these vector these tangent vector lines these tangent vector vectors so what what is cx in in ky? You can go ahead and pr improve this yourself, but I'll just tell you on the spot. Cx would be the starting x value, and ky would be the starting y value. I'll write my words in a less lazy, sloppy way. Lazy way, starting y value. And cx would be our starting x value. You can prove this by setting your x and y's to zero and, and solve it from there. So that's the x in, in k by there are both our initial values. That's what we call them in differential calculus. Initial values. So when x when cx and ky are both zero. That means that we are starting, of course, from the origin. And they're 
both zero. So when they're both zero, we get x equals two lambda squared plus zero. Just yeah, that's just two lambda squared for x. And we get y equals two lambda. And that would be our path. Two, x is two lambda squared, y is two lambda. So when lambda equals one, x would equal two, and y would equal two. And when lambda equals two, you'd have x being uh, eight and y being four. So two, two, and then eight, four. Eight, where is our four? Right there. And then at zero, we also get zero, zero. So our path would look like this. Let's draw the path in. Let's draw in a vibrant yellow. Our path would, would look like this. And this really now our path will go on forever. We're just drawing we're just, we're just gonna stop there. But and this really makes sense because look at where these vector arrows are pointing. At the end our vectors have a greater magnitude and at the beginning they have a smaller magnitude. At the left the slope is greater, and at the right, the slope is, uh, is, is smaller. There's a smaller rate of change as it goes towards the right. So you can expect the vector to like start to, to start to pick up momentum. It's, it just when when you start at zero zero, you're gonna start at that specific point, unless you. As you move along, not move along, but as you leave zero zero, as you leave zero zero, you're gonna gain some traction as your vectors are getting the magnitude is getting greater and greater and greater, right? But then as you go towards the right, you're you're gonna start to lose some traction, you're gonna start to lose some speed because your vectors become more, they become less steep, and you. And you form this curve, so you start to, to accelerate. Then you, you're still accelerating, but you're really decelerating, and you get slower, slower, and slower, and then it is oh, it's just gonna go like that. So what basically happens is that these vectors over here, these these useful vectors, will actually pretty much t would pretty much uh decide the fate of a ball. This is a ball being spawned from the origin. It's gonna nudge it to the right, which 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 would cause it to cause it to lose traction over here. So you can act, and this has real real world applications, especially in fluid flow. This can be a a vector field in water, and you can have a ball on on the origin, and you can find the path the ball would travel through these vector vortexes or whatever the, these current vectors in the water you, you can you can find that so yeah in in this path we we call this path a flow curve and that's what they call flow curve because this is pretty much this is pretty much fluid flow these vectors are the directions of the current and you're just finding the path an object will will, will, will take at when when they're at a specific point, it's like having a uh, some water source, sprink like sprinkling, like just spraying water. Not really, but like, sorry. Let's say you're, you're there's there's a pool, and there's in the sense that there's some water, there's some like water thing, and this water thing would would spew out water in the pool, in the pool, and and when it spews out water, it spews some water. It will spew some water in the front 
and maybe more water at the back. So at the back of this thing, you're going to get more stronger currents in the water. And 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 each point has some certain currents in and where you are and and when and where you are in the water determines what path you'll take. Even without this, I think this kind of makes it confusing the 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 source of the current. If you just have an ocean and you have some currents in the ocean, you have some certain ocean currents. Like just lo look at an 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 ocean graph or an ocean current graph. You see these, these arrows pointing out pointing out various places. That those arrows just tell what those arrows mean is that when you start at some point, say here, you're gonna this point would tr travel in this direction. They're just the flow curves. That's what that's what they are. In aviation, you, you're gonna have air current. Those air current lines, even in we in weather, you're gonna have weather currents. All all those all, all about those things mean is that when you start at some place, that's that's the, that's the, the direction that you're gonna travel in. So in here, these vectors, these vectors, well, they're not they're not, they're not the paths that you're going to just travel in. They're not the paths. The paths are these flow curves. In this in, in this air current, I can have some vectors. I can place some vectors here. And these would be the resulting flow curves from those vectors. And this this is just one flow curve. If I, if I pick a different point, I'm going to get a different flow curve. In this case, it's going to look something like something like this. It can be pretty similar, but if I started, say, over here, well, my flow curve is probably going to look something like this. It just depends on your CX and your KY initial values, okay? Let's work out one more problem. Just one more. Let's say that you have the vector V equals uh, 3... E x plus y squared plus y squared lambda. Actually, let's change it up a little bit to lambda lambda e x plus two. Plus EY. Let's make it that. What would that, what would the flow curves actually look like? Well, the flow curves would, would, would be, well, the derivatives would be dx over d lambda equals lambda and 1 equals dy over d lambda since there's a 1 hidden over here. We can integrate both sides. We have x. In this case, x would actually be 1. And here, we'd have... So that's the value for x. Here we have 1 equals dy over d lambda. The, uh, we had to integrate both sides. And when, you, when you integrate both sides, you get y equals lambda. And x equals one. Oof, we, we forgot to have to add the constants CX and KY at the front. So this is a bit a bit more nicer answer, a bit more simple answer, no squares or whatever. X is one plus CX. One CX and KY are just are just the origin points. Then you're gonna get X equals one and Y equals lambda for your for your curve. For this vector field so yeah that's pretty much the gist of flow curves they're pretty cool are you're gonna study them in engineering fluid flow and aviation they're pretty important so yeah that's flow curves and that's how they connect to what we did in the last video 
Have a great day. Stay safe. See you. See you.